Hello, miserable humans. We are in the month of May, or as we enter the sea, call it Mermay, a term you humans somehow learned and then stole from us. Which won't let go because of how it leads to a lot of amazing more people related art. Anyway, this Mermay is particularly special because of how later this month we will have the theatrical release of the live-action remake of the anime classic The Little Mermaid. First of all, let's get something out of the way. Yes, I know everyone is sick of live-action remakes because of how there are too many coming out and people have a lot of issues with them. However, I don't think they're all bad and honestly, I find the whole complaining about their existence a lot more annoying than the remakes themselves. Especially when there have been some good ones. My personal favorites are Cinderella and Cruella. But yeah, the quality of the remakes have varied in my opinion. Some have been good, some have been a mixed bag. And of course, there's the bad. Not to mention those that are dead on arrival, especially when you see the mess that's already going on with the Lilo and Stitch live-action remake. It's gonna suck and we all know it. Anyway, I will say that while I'm a lot more open-minded about these movies than most people are, one remake that I've always been both excited and skeptical about was the live-action remake of The Little Mermaid. The original movie is not only my favorite Disney movie and my favorite anime movie, but one of my favorite movies in general. It has gorgeous animation, amazing songs, wonderful and memorable characters, one of the best protagonists of all time, along with one of the best antagonists of all time, a great romance, and themes and messages that have aged like fine wine. So of course, when something you love is getting remade, you're going to be judging it harshly because you hold it to a very high standard. The movie isn't out yet, but I want to discuss my thoughts on the remake so far, and I will be sure to come back and review the film when it comes out after I have watched it a few times. So this will be pretty surface level, no pun intended, and not a deep dive. Again, no pun intended intended analysis of the film since it's still not out yet. In my opinion, the visuals of the film look amazing. While I do think the colors need to be more saturated, the environments look gorgeous, and I feel like there will be more vibrant movements with the musical numbers because of how being underwater allows for more elaborate choreography that can't be done on land. While it's not as gorgeous as the Aquaman movie, it still looks spectacular in my opinion. I really love the design of Ariel's tail with the colors and the layers to her fins. Not to mention, I love that little fin thing around her scale bra and how the bra is a part of her skin rather than just being a seashell bra. Her sisters look absolutely phenomenal as well, especially Tamika. I also really like the update to King Trident's look, with him having armor on his torso. I mean, you humans might not think that it would work, but as people are a lot stronger than you are, he would be able to carry it. However, I will say from personal experience that it takes a lot of getting used to and your back is usually sore for a day. Well, that is, if you're one of the mer people. Anyway, I'm also really impressed with Ursula's design and how she looks intimidating but still fun and vibrant. Not to mention, I love the bioluminescence that are part of her design. Unfortunately, there are some design choices that I would have done differently, like making Ariel's hair more fire engine red. I mean, it's a musical and a movie about a mermaid, so I think you can use fun colors like that for her hair. I mean, Hallie's sister Chloe had had red hair that was closer to that shade and she looked absolutely amazing. But I am glad that they kept her hair red, even if it's not the shade that I would have personally chose. And while this has been stated before, and it's an issue I've mentioned in my video about where I talked about what I want to see in the live action remake of The Swan Princess, but the animals don't look nearly as fun and don't have as much personality to their designs. I miss the days of the Chronicles of Narnia and Stuart Little, where the animal characters were more stylized so they could have more expressive emotions and show off their personalities better. Flounder, while cute, looks kind of devoid of life. Sebastian, while he doesn't look as heinous as people make him out to be, does look kind of off. And Scuttle, while she looks the most decent, isn't on the same levels as Margalo from the Stuart Little 2 movie. I'm just saying, being more stylized never hurt anything. I'm also not a fan of the way Atlantica looks, or at least, I think that's Atlantica. I mean, it's just a bunch of sea rocks shaped oddly and it doesn't really feel like an underwater palace. The one in the original was absolutely
absolutely gorgeous, enchanting, and felt like a kingdom that would exist under the sea. I can tell you, I've seen underwater palaces, and they look nothing like what you see in the live-action remake, at least what we see so far. This just doesn't really have the same magic to it that the original did. I'm really hoping this isn't how Atlantica looks, but I'm pretty sure it is, because they wouldn't go this long without revealing the kingdom. The film looks like it's going to capture the tone of the original movie very well, and I'm hoping it'll throw in some differences to keep it from being too much like the original. I mean, they did add Eric's mother to the cast, so hopefully that will add an interesting dynamic. Speaking of which, I read that apparently the relationship between Ariel and Ursula will have a new layer to it, with Ariel trying to find a maternal figure in a sense, which will make things interesting. I mean, Ursula is taking advantage of Ariel in a vulnerable moment, so it makes sense if she tried playing into the maternal warmth this way Ariel into the direction she wants in order to obtain her evil goals. I also don't mind that they change what kind of bird that Scuttle is, so that she can dive under the water and interact with Ariel more. I also don't really have an issue with Scuttle being gender-bent, because female relationships are important, and that is something that was lacking in the original, which makes me wish that we got more interactions with her and Gabriella from the TV series. Just so long as she captures the spirit of the character, that's what matters. The music, I'm hoping, will be amazing. I mean, we have Alan Macon returning to do the score, and Lin-Manuel Miranda does the lyrics for the songs. Granted, I hate rap music, but Lin-Manuel Miranda manages to make it work in musicals, even if I'm not the biggest fan of the genre. I do hate that they changed the lyrics to kiss the girl to make it more quote-unquote consensual, when Ariel was shown hinting at him to kiss her in the original. Original. They are trying to appear woke by appealing to an imaginary audience when no one ever complained about Kiss the Girl lacking consent. Also, some lyrics in Poor Unfortunate Souls will be changed to be more sensitive or whatever, despite it being a villain song, so it doesn't have to be that sensitive. I'll have to wait to find out how I feel about that, but so far, it's leaving a bad taste in my mouth. I do have faith due to Rob Marshall being the director, who not only was the director and choreographer, for Into the Woods, Chicago, Mary Poppins Returns, and the 1999 version of Annie, but also do the choreography for the 1997 Rodgers and Hammerstein Cinderella starring Brandy Norwood and the late and always great Whitney Houston. That alone gives me faith in this film because that should at least mean that we'll get some vibrant and energized musical numbers, even though he unfortunately didn't do the choreography for this particular movie. I suppose the last thing I should talk about is the cast of the movie. I will say that I really love the cast. They are all really talented actors that I feel will bring new life into the characters. I've actually seen the movie Lyle Lyle Crocodile, where Javier Bardem shows off his really impressive singing chops. Aquafina is really good at comedy, and I loved her as Sisu, so she should make for a pretty good scuttle. David Diggs does a really good job with the accent, plus I already know that he's a great singer, so it should make for a good Sebastian. And Jacob Tremley will definitely make a flawless flounder. I'm not as familiar with Jonah Howard King's work, so I can't really judge whether I think he will be good, but he does look the part, and it's nice that a Jewish man gets to play a prince when Disney seems to have a thing with Jewish coding their villains. Something I absolutely adore is the colorblind casting that is similar to the Brandy version of Cinderella where race isn't even questioned. All of Ariel's sisters are a different race, which reminds me a lot of the Broadway version of The Little Mermaid where Ariel's sisters were played by different races. I was hoping for this to happen when I heard about the casting of Ariel, and I'm so happy it happened. Even Eric's mother is played by a black woman. I will say that a casting choice that I was incredibly skeptical about, along with the rest of the internet, was Melissa McCarthy as Ursula. Don't get me wrong, Melissa is a fun and energetic actress, but I didn't think she would pull off being a villain. I personally wanted Ursula to be played by Kiala Settle, who you will recognize as Letty Luce, the bearded lady from The Greatest Showman. However, I decided to keep an open mind because maybe the director just saw something during her audition that we didn't. As it turns out, that's exactly what happened because once we got clips of her as Ursula, it was like she was a completely different person. She was intimidating, sinister, sly, and even her voice sounded different from her normal voice. I probably shouldn't have been surprised that she could change her voice because of how she did voice Dee and Amy from Kim Possible and she sounded really different from her regular voice there too. People on the internet are even calling her 
quote unquote mother because of how good she is as Ursula based on the previews, and they are right. This has gone from one of my biggest concerns about the film to being one of the things I'm looking the most forward to. She's gonna be phenomenal. And finally, we've come to The Little Mermaid herself, Halle Bailey as Ariel. Do I even need to say anything? Halle just is Ariel. There's no debating this. All the clips I've seen of her have absolutely been giving Ariel vibes. Her expressions, her emotion, her smile, her laugh, her fire, it's just everything. Also, I can confirm that there are black mermaids, so deal with that objective fact, you racist. Also, Hallie's voice is just perfect for the role. Even her speaking voice has aerial vibes to it. I was watching the trailer with my fiancé, and she actually thought it was Jodie Benson, the original voice of Ariel, speaking during that moment, when it was actually Hallie. Her singing is flawless. That's a voice that people would describe as the most beautiful voice and would drive young men to obsession. Her her voice is so otherworldly with how it sounds futuristic, but also classical. It's perfect for a mermaid, especially one who is said to have the most beautiful voice. I keep listening to her version of Part of Your World, and she not only sounds brilliant, she makes it her own and adds a lot of emotion and personality to it. If she doesn't get an Oscar or at least a nomination for Best Actress for this role, there is no justice in this world. They made the right choice casting Halle as Ariel, and I am looking forward to seeing her bring one of the most beloved loved and iconic characters of all time to life. So if you couldn't tell, I'm absolutely excited about this movie. I'm still skeptical because this is a remake to something I love so dearly, but I'm still looking forward to seeing it. I just really hope it doesn't disappoint. Anyway, what do you think of the remake so far? Let me know in the comments. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. You can also check out my other social media accounts in the links below. I'm the Wicked Boy Man from Under the Sea. <laughs>